Can you tell me a little bit how you got involved in doing this film or how you got inspired to do it and got the access and everything? The access was easy because my husband was working there part time um, as a freelance uh, cameraman. And I had always loved Elmo. And I had, uh, James came back from work one day with some footage of Elmo looking at pictures of our daughter, talking to camera, saying, hi, Sophia, I'm here with your dad, and you're so cute, and I love you, or Elmo loves you, not I love you. And uh, I was just blown away by the fact that Kevin... See, she's been around with, with, with Elmo a long time now, because she knows Elmo never says I. That's why she corrected herself. It's always uh, first person. So um, I just was completely taken aback by the fact that this superstar would take the time to make a video for us and for our daughter. And I just said to James, find out if Kevin would be interested in having a documentary made about him. I, the, the character is so amazing. I want to, he seems to, he's an amazing person. I want to know more about this man, so. And so when she sort of came to you, Kevin, with the idea, were you uh, very open to it? Did you sort of check with Sesame Street first? Or were you just all on board yeah. right away? Or what was your first well, reaction? Well, normally, I, you know, I, 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 you know we, we had a conversation. And, and I thought it would be kind of fun because I always wanted to, I had just got off of, of writing a book about being Elmo, about, you know, life as a furry red monster. And so I did that because I really wanted to, uh, to tell my story to people because it's been so much fun. And, uh, and, and also the, the whole Cinderella story of, of, of the whole, you know, getting Elmo and it becoming that popular. So um, taking it the next step and, and, and showing it visually I thought would be really exciting. And also really trying to um, show the world, um, they know about the Muppets and everything, but I really wanted to show them another aspect of the silliness and the magic that can happen with it. I mean, the great thing about the film, it's not just sort of about, you know, the Muppets or Sesame Street. It's definitely, you know, your journey and your, you know, how, how you got to the place where you are. Um, and I found that very inspiring and very much, you know, I, I like the fact that it focused on you and not just sort of the show or, or just the one character. Um, and I think it's a very inspiring film for sort of high schoolers to see because, again, you started this back in high school and you got into it then and sort of followed your dream, basically, what yeah, you wanted to do. I started when I was 10 and actually kept going and, and stayed with it once I got in high school and then incorporated into uh, getting good grades. <laughs> Staying in school. Legally, everything was legal, everything was fine. But, uh, well, you know, what kind of was, I mean, the next step was really to, to talk to the company about would it be okay? And actually they were, they were in the process of, uh, of doing another documentary on the co-productions, international co-productions that we were doing. And they said, you know, and, and then I went back to Connie with this, but they were saying, hey, we, you know, there was so much going on with that. Can we wait a little bit? We're fine with you doing it, but can we wait a little bit until that's done? Because they were running around trying to get that done. Yeah, but they were so. still great because there was something I really wanted to shoot during that just can you wait period. And they were like, fine. Just don't start doing anything with it until you know we release you to do it. But it, they were fantastic. They were fantastic. And your access obviously was very much you know welcomed and helped out because of Kevin's you know access and his onboard you know ability to sort of I come was on really board. I was surprised and that they would be as open to having us do pretty much anything we anything we asked or requested to do that Kevin was going to do, we were able to do it. I think except going to the Oprah show. I think that was the only thing. Was there anything in the film then maybe that Kevin, when it finally was done and you saw a cut, was there anything that you didn't want in there, like, oh, Elmo's on the floor or Elmo's on a table, or was sure, there anything like that? I those comments, definitely. Um, matter of fact, the whole floor thing with, with you know, at, at the beginning we, we, we had set up a photo shoot for, actually they came, I was doing a photo shoot for the cover of the book. And um, the, the shop, the Muppet shop knows that I'm very much hands-on since I started building puppets before I started performing. I know all the aspects and the ins and outs of, of building puppets, so they give me leeway, the shop gives me leeway sometimes to get more involved with uh, the building and, and how the, the rig the puppets and stuff like that. So uh, we, I was taking a scissors and cutting a little bit of almost fur because it was a little ratty uh, in certain places. And, uh, and uh, you know, James, who was a phenomenal camera guy, he was you know, shooting and then watching the fur fall on the floor. And so we were like, I said, no, you can't show up. Because I really wanted to respect the shop, that they are the ones who are the geniuses of making these things, and, and I just help out when I can. And, and so, you know, there was bits and pieces of things like that. You know, uh, you know uh, how much my family was in it, how much 
you know, uh, I wanted to show my life with my family because that's, you know, I, I don't, because I'm a puppeteer, that is uh, something I don't have to get into, you know, but, uh, but I did want to show the, the, the love and respect that my family had for, for all of us, brothers, my brothers and sisters growing up and how they were very inspiring to us about whatever we wanted to do. And then, you know, having a child of my own um, and, and the challenges of being, of this character being so popular and me being so busy, uh, not being there for certain things that I really wanted to be there for, for my daughter. So um, we talked about it, we, we talked about how far we wanted to go with that. And, because we knew that that wasn't going to be the focus, that wasn't what, you know, uh, but it, 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 we felt as though it still needed to be a, a, a part of it. And I was going to say, your daughter in growing up, um, I have two kids of my own and everything, and they're very young, two and five, and they love watching Sesame Street and the different characters. At what age did she sort of want to say to you, Daddy, leave the room, I want to talk to Elmo now? Or did she sort of understand the whole time that basically you were Elmo? Oh, no, she started at a young age, um, you know, having a conversation with me on the phone, you know, uh, you know, Daddy, can I speak to Elmo? And it was always really sweet. Matter of fact, uh, Jean and I, my ex-wife, we, we were concerned at one point because she was three and a half and she started this chant saying, Daddy, Elmo, I want Daddy, Daddy, Elmo, Elmo. And we thought we were all bored. This, we're going to have to spend some money getting therapy. And fortunately, you know, it was just a phase. But then she uh, she started to, um, you know, like kids can be manipulative in certain ways. And so she would get on and say, Daddy, can I speak to Elmo? And Elmo would get on and she would say, you know, Elmo has this great Barbie doll that, you know, that I want you to tell Daddy about it. You know? and so I'd get back on and she said, Daddy, Elmo has something really important to tell you. So she would play, you know. I remember when she was really young, um, she would fall out, you know, like kids do. And, and I would give her my Emmy. I would put it down on the floor. I said, you deserve this more than I figured. <laughs> so it was always wonderful. And, and then, you know, it got to the point where, you know, she, she taught me how to use a computer. So I would get home and she would have printed out some, you know, Elmo pictures. And I would sign for, my te for her teachers and for her friends. So it was always this really nice, positive, fun thing. She never ever said to me, you know, you spend more time, you know. Um, when she was older, she talked about that she wanted just to spend more time with me because of my work, not because of Sesame Street or. Uh, so she was never, it was never something that she felt jealous about, you know, with Elmo or anything like Candace Bergen did at a certain point with, uh, with, with, with her father's characters and stuff. But it was interesting, I, I got to talk to her about that. And it was an interesting conversation, she's a really cool lady, and, you know, because I wanted to ask her about that because of Shannon and stuff. It was really nice, nice, nice time spent with her, and how much she respected Jim, because she knew that Jim respected her father so much and dedicated the first movie to him, the Muppet movie. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, as a father, again, you have a daughter, and you're the, you know, the father figure. So when she's dating now, and she brings oh, a boy Lord. home and everything, and does she say, "Oh, by the way, my dad is Elmo"? And then what is the reaction of like, you know, sort of interrogating the uh, would-be you know, suitor? It's yeah, I, I do it in Elmo's voice. Yeah, where you taking her? <laughs> How are you going to be out with her? <laughs> you know, like, I don't think, I don't, I, first of all, I don't think he, I would get any respect from him if I, if I did it in Elmo's voice. Like, it's 11 o'clock. You know, get on the phone. Where are you? You know, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would get any respect. No, you know, it's funny, I haven't really gotten into that, fortunately. Uh, I've met some of her boyfriends and they're really cool and, and uh, you know, they, they don't say, so you do Elmo. They don't, they're very respectful, and so it's, it's nice. And now, also, for this film, kind of like this, is this your first film? And, and are you now inspired to make many, many more documentaries of different subjects? All or? No, all the puppets. Everything has to be puppets, puppets from now on. Yes. Next is the workshop. And the, you know. oh, is that a serious proposition? It's a, it's a, it's a sequel. Oh, it's yeah, I'm there. Sequels. Listen, a whole bunch of us made this film. Um, you know, James Moore is the DP, and Philip Shane. Uh, Many, many roles, co editor uh, and co director and writer, and Justin Weinstein, who also edited and wrote the film. And, you know, we, many of us have worked together before. We worked on a film called Green Chimneys, which was at Sundance a bunch of years ago. Um, and yes, we love what we do, and I would love to work with everybody who worked on this again, including Kevin. So um, it's been a lot of fun. As you can see, you know, following somebody like Kevin around for six years. Is Fun. The amount of footage and, 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 and wonderful uh, moments 
uh, that they were around for was amazing. And uh, it's, it's a ch I tell you, they probably had the same challenges that um, Biography had when they did a whole documentary. They, they got to the point where they said, we can't tell this in an hour, so they did two hours worth. And I know that probably with, 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 with Phil and James and, and Justin and, and you, I mean, they, it's so much wonderful footage that didn't make it uh, just because the story had to be told and told in a way that people could understand it. I mean, there was so much. And, uh, but I feel as though they did pick the best and, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, very, it's, it's, it's very exciting to see it with an audience. It's, it's pretty amazing to me. I was going to say the first screening you had publicly was Sundance and now we're at South by Southwest in Austin for another screening. So it was the first time you ever saw it with an audience at Sundance? And how was that with like, I mean, the reaction? It was the first time that I saw the, the, the doc finished was at, was at, was at Sundance at the, at the premiere. And uh, it blew me away. It was very emotional, much more emotional than I expected. But if you talk to the executive producer of Sesame Street, uh, Carolyn Ferranti, who was there, she said she knew I was going to just cry through the whole thing. Um, but uh, it was very emotional because, you know, the thing is, is that uh, we, I know how popular Sesame Street is. I know how loved the Muppets are. But to really show that much behind the scenes, it was interesting. There was you don't know this, but there was little, um, in, you know, articles on when when Cookie Monster was on um, uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, and they showed the puppeteer coming on stage, where you know the piano is playing and everybody's saying goodbye at the end, and there was some criticism about it. So that was that was prior to this coming out, and I was like saying, oh, are they going to feel that way? And it was just the opposite. Uh, I think because of the way the story was told and why those aspects were there made it very clear what it was there for and, uh, and uh, I think everybody got it and I, I, not that I think everybody got it, I, I heard it and, and uh, it was amazing what they reacted to and, uh, and those were the things that I really wanted them to react to and they did and so it was, it was really amazing and a lot of fun and, and uh, very inspiring for me to continue uh, with the, the feeling that I, that I got. Um, at that premiere. And I was going to say, now that it's completed, it's done, it's sort of over, what sort of message do you want anyone to watch it sort of to take away from the film? Well, for me, when you have a dream, don't let any obstacles get in the way. I mean, I was this little black kid at, in Turner Station, you know, where, you know, the kids were saying, you know, uh, you sleep with your kids, you know, you sleep with your kids, you sleep with your puppets, and, uh, and uh, I just ignored all of that and kept going because I knew I enjoyed what I was doing. And, and the support of parents and everything and the love that they had and the encouragement, um, you know, it just kept me going. And, and I just feel as though, by all means, if you have something that you're really, really excited about and want to do, go for it. Don't let anybody stop you. I can't say that. I, I second the motion. <laughs>